If you're traveling to Lisbon, there's so much to do. So we're gonna give you some of our highlights and then also help you out with two day trips that we did, one to Sintra and one to Coimbra. And hopefully these tips will make your trip even that much more enjoyable. So Lisbon, if you're going to be visiting there, there's many places that you could get uh, information on Lisbon, but we'll give you our short take. And if you've seen our videos before, you know that we're not the biggest fan of large cities, so you might guess that it wasn't our favorite place. And you'd be kind of right. The streets are extremely steep and crowded with both people and cars. Uh, it's also a bit dirtier than I expected. We stayed in Alfalma, which is the really oldest historic part of Lisbon. So it was uh, probably the most dense and maybe most crowded and steepest streets. So our first impressions uh, were maybe a little bit worse than what we actually came to realize. The rest of Lisbon had more to offer. Um, so we did grow to like Lisbon more than we initially, our first impressions led us to believe. Our favorite part about being in Lisbon were the number of food and drink options that were really high quality, especially the cocktails. Our favorite amongst these was Quattro Testa, which was uh, a couple that owns it. One is from the Basque region of Spain and the other is Italian. So the cocktail menu is sort of a fusion of their two regions and they were all really, really good. Another place that we really enjoyed that was great for us because it was across our Airbnb was Lisboa 2 and E or you and I. And this place is a very small. You walk in, you barely, you're like basically in the kitchen when you walk in. It's super tight, but they have tables that they put outside. Every furniture that you see is covered in people's signature. The food is amazing. The experience is great. The server is wonderful. Another spot that we really liked that Nate found was Alto Real. It was a steakhouse that, oh my gosh, the portions were really good sized portions. The steak was cooked amazingly. The sides were great. It was affordable. Yeah, that was a great meal that we had after a long day of visiting Sintra, which is what we'll talk about next. So Sintra, everyone knows Sintra. If you've seen the very, very colorful palace that's huge, that's Sintra, and we of course embarked on that journey as well to go visit Sintra from Lisbon. It was pretty easy to get to, depending on which station you go to get your train to Sintra. There may be lines, so we ended up missing the first train that we wanted to catch by a couple minutes because the, the queue for getting the tickets was pretty long. So once you get on the train, most people will be going to the final destination, which is Sintra. Um, there are two stops in Sintra, to so make sure you get off at the second one, but everyone else will be doing the same thing, so just follow the crowd. And that's going to be a theme throughout the day. There are going to be crowds, so be prepared for that. There's going to be longer lines, longer waits, uh, crowded uh, places that you're going to want to visit. So just bear that in mind. It's going to be kind of a long day. You want to start early to get the most out of it that you can. Everyone that's getting off the train is going to the same location or one of the many same locations. So you have cab drivers, you have buses, you have people screaming, hey, do you need a ride, do you need a ride? So it is a little chaotic. Most people opt for taking a bus or taking a cab to the palace. We ended up walking, which I don't recommend if you're pressed for time. We did miss out on visiting another location because of the time that it took to walk. So we walked all the way to the palace, which was uh, a long hike. I mean, it really is a hike, it's that steep. But that is part of the, the charm of it, if that's something that you're physically interested in doing. Um, it kind of got us away from the crowd and into the woods a little bit, which felt nicer than just yeah. taking a bus on the main street and being dropped off right at the palace door. Yeah. And once you do arrive at the palace doors, you actually arrive at the bottom of it. You can purchase your tickets there or online. There usually is a discount if you purchase them online. The tickets for entering the palace are a timed entry, so you're going to need to buy those in advance. For us, it was the off season, so we bought it the day of when we got there, and the entry was about an hour later. So I think that walk took us, I don't know, maybe a half hour, and then we had another half hour wait before our entry into the palace. And the walk all the way up there and the waiting area, it's all going to have lots of great views. So you're going to want to take pictures along the way. When you do enter the palace, it's all roped off so that you're going through from one room to another in a sort of structured way. Uh, until you get to some of the courtyards and other levels of the palace, you get to kind of wander around a little more freely. But going through the interior of the palace, you're um, expected to follow this one specific path that's been laid out for you and everyone else's following that path as well. So it's basically one big procession line 
through the interior. And do take the time to go through all of the little exits so that you can go outside, take some photos. Because if you stay in the structured line, sometimes it's easy to miss. Like, oh, I can go outside here and take some photos. And also there is a, a walk around the front or of the palace where you can see the ocean that is below the cafeteria. So you may miss it. I like doing that walk because that walk because there was no one else around. It was very, you know, very secluded. So it was really cool. I did love seeing the palace, but it was a little bit of an adjustment because there's just so many people. It is packed and we went off season. So it wasn't as busy. Yeah, it was something that was fun to see. Uh, it, it is good to see in person and compared to all the pictures that people put out there. It's not the kind of experience that's ever gonna be on my top uh, list of favorite things that I've done, but I am glad that we went. The second place that we went to after going to the palace was the Quinta de Regalia. And I could, again, could be saying that wrong, but it's mostly known for a famous initiation wall that is inside. And that was actually my highlight, not so much the well, but just the entire experience. There's a lot of grounds that you can explore freely. The initiation well is similar to Peña Palace in the sense that everyone goes there because it's written about in every tour book and talked about in every video. So it has a similar experience in the sense that there is within uh, the grounds of this um, Quinta de Regularia, there is a line to get specifically to the initiation well and then everyone jockeying for position to take pictures inside the well. So it's not like a tranquil experience. Once you're at the bottom of the well, the well uh, there are different caves that you can walk through, which are really, really cool. Uh, you, we needed to take out our phones because of how dark it was down there. And that was great because that meant that there was no one else around. So we were able to explore these caves and take some really cool photos. That was something that we actually liked more because we were exploring something that other people were just passing by and they didn't realize what they were missing out on. The rest of the grounds uh, of this area are that you can just freely explore. They have gardens and cool little structures and monuments and towers that you can climb in and out of. And you had a lot more space and freedom to do that. So that was more fun to me. Uh, the palace, which is on the grounds, is better on the outside than it is on the inside. We did walk through the inside, but it wasn't as much to see. The exterior was very cool. Though. Yeah, definitely go to Sintra. We enjoyed it. We wish we had more time. I would have liked to do an overnight in Sintra. I felt a little pressed for time, especially the way that we toured it by walking. Uh, we walked through the downtown of Sintra, uh, going to the, the Peña Palace and on the way back. And if we had had an evening there to spend, there looked like a lot of nice restaurants that we could have enjoyed a, a nice dinner at. Another destination that's close to Lisbon is Quimbra, which is the major university center of Portugal. So it has the most historic, oldest university in the country. There are many trains that go from Lisbon to Northern Portugal, and most of these pass through Quimbra. So it's very easily accessible from Lisbon. The city does have a university feel. There's a much younger population. Uh, you can tell that there are a lot of international students. You do hear English being spoken on the streets, but this time it's not from tourists. It's a lot of students it made me feel a little more at home because I could understand what people were talking about but I also didn't feel like a super tourist because it wasn't just a bunch of people with Polaroid cameras around their neck. Who are you seeing with Polaroid <laughs> cameras? I don't know. <laughs> you have to buy entrance to tour the couple of the different buildings. One of them being the famous library, which is, it is so extra. <laughs> um, it's worth visiting, but it's, the, it's another one of those that you have to do a timed entry. Uh, we did do the tour. I personally just didn't like the process. Anytime anything is very structured, it's not usually my favorite. It was nice. I'm glad that I saw it, but I actually enjoyed seeing some of the other buildings a bit more because then we were able to explore on our own and spend as much time as we wanted. In the library, when you go to tour it, you are only allowed in sections for like five minutes and then someone else comes in and lets you into the other room for 10 minutes. So everything is pretty quick. For me, one of the highlights of the library was actually the fact that there are live bats that live in there. Yeah, we don't know why they're there or when they arrived, but uh, they live up and behind some of the highest bookshelves that are in the library. And then they come out at night uh, through a hole or an opening above the main doorways in the library. So they're free to come and go as they please. As tourists, you're not free to come and go, but the bats can. <laughs> One of the other things that you could do while at the university is go to the botanical gardens. A lot of people overlook this because it's not, it's free. It's not one of the big publicized things to do, but it is beautiful and it's worth doing. We spent close to, I think probably almost two hours just walking in the grounds. Uh, there was a bamboo pathway that was really cool. 
And yeah, I really enjoyed the garden and that was something that wasn't on my list, but I'm glad we found. I think one of the highlights for me in Canberra was that it felt like there was a lot to do, but it felt like there was a lot to do because of the student population and not necessarily because it was catering to a large um, tourist population. It's right on the water. So we walked down and it was just gorgeous. It was a fall day. It kind of felt like being back home with the beautiful big trees and changing of leaves. And that was something that not a lot of people were doing, but it was great. We found a brewery that was really close by on the water and that was something that we enjoyed as well. There's one particular area in Canberra that has a lot of Fado music venues. And these are restaurants that also provide Fado entertainment uh, on most nights. So you can go there and there's a museum of Fado and then there's a Fado restaurant. We went to Casa de Fado. We went there for a show one night. We were right in the show. <laughs> I basically was part of the band. Yeah. Like, like the guitars was, I had to move because the guitar was basically hitting me. <laughs> when you say it's it's an intimate show, like that's, you can't get more, well, I guess you could get more intimate than this, but we wouldn't have wanted to. No <laughs> <laughs> very nice there were maybe 20 of us in that space including the staff uh, the singers the musicians so it just felt very authentic to just be able to experience the music from people that studied it that love it and you know we paid i think it was 10 euros for each of us to be able to enjoy that so great value for your money great experience and i i would do it again in a heartbeat we spent about two to three nights in kimbra and i think that's a good amount of time if you really wanted to you could probably do the highlights in one day yeah i think it's a great visit but i don't think there are enough big attractions that you would need to spend more time there if you are going to visit lisbon do yourself a favor give yourself some time to explore these other cities there's so much in the area thank you so much for watching let us know in the comments if you have visited any of these cities, what were some of your favorite spots? And if you haven't, which cities do you want to visit? And please also subscribe to our channel. It helps support us. And let us know in the comments if there's anything else that we missed that you would want us to cover in another video. Thanks so much for watching. Hi, I'm Migs. And Nate. And we have some tips for you about- oh, no. I messed up. What? You said you're Migs. And I said Nate, I didn't say I'm Nate. Oh my gosh, it doesn't matter, it's sweetheart. It's grammar, grammar. And you gotta chill. <laughs> okay, go. Hi, I'm Nate. And I'm Magdalia. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Just let me be who I want to be. Okay. Hi, I'm Nate. And Mix. No, and you're Mix. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, and I will <laughs> <Wait>. stop laughing. <laughs>